Hey everyone, this is Ed from Stencil One. How are you? I'm here with Craftsy today and um, it's the first day of summer, so happy summer solstice. And what's better than to uh, have as a summer project but to paint some t-shirts so uh, you could have your summer gear uh, customized to your liking with stencils. Uh, so today is t-shirt painting day and uh, with Craftsy we have provided a downloadable free stencil if you don't have stencils at home. Um, to back up, I'm the founder of Stencil One. Um, here's my sign. And yes, I founded Stencil One in 2004 uh, out of my love of stenciling, making stencils, and I thought let me make some stencils that people can uh, play with that are a little more modern, fun. Um, I'm really into pop culture, pattern. Um, so just kind of released a bunch of interesting stencils at the time and I've kept it going. So I have stencils for walls, um, for painting clothes. Um, look, we're in Brooklyn. So you're gonna hear People screaming on the street, you're gonna hear dogs barking. <laughs> so I apologize, live video. Um, so yeah, um, I started Stencil One 2004, um, making stencils, shipping them out from my home. Uh, years later, bunch of books on stenciling and I just brought these out to show you real quick. This one is kind of perfect for today because this one was specific to how to stencil clothing and all different things you could do with stencils on fabric. Um, so I'm going to get these books out of the way um, and get into what supplies you need today to paint shirts and how to get the absolute best results uh, with uh, stencils. So the first thing you need is stencils. So you do have that free download that you can cut out. And I kind of made it an easy design to cut out, which is uh, some hexagons, which could be a fun pattern on shirts. Um, but I also brought some of my stencil collection here. Um, so I have this four pack of love and hearts um, that I thought might go well with some shirts. These are great for making Valentine's cards. You know, our stencils can be used on any material and you can do them in reverse. Obviously, maybe with the video, you're seeing it different than I'm showing it, but I, painted this shirt prior and we're going to add more designs to it in a minute but i'm going to go through all the supplies first that you need so you need stencils and um, feel free to go to stencil1.com and look at uh, the stencils i offer if you join the mailing list you'll always get some nice um, discount codes um, we have like over 500 designs so uh, i hope you find something you like um, now for t-shirts you need fabric paint um i'm i've used many different brands of uh, fabric paint i really enjoy this one by pebeo p-e-b-e-o it's called seta color um, they sell many colors of fabric paint and once you paint it on your clothes and you heat seal it with an iron it will be permanently on your shirt much like a silk screen so um the reason i like these paints is once you heat seal them and wash your shirt your shirt is soft it's not going to feel like a, a plastic decal it's going to feel made of the fabric um i also like the thickness of their paint and um wow hello from china first day stenciling good good okay i'm gonna I'm gonna go slow. <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna do it, and you're gonna love it. Um, so this paint is super, not too thick. Um, it's perfect for stenciling. So I do like this brand, but you can experiment with all different brands and and see what works best for you. But this one, I like it. Now, stencil brushes. I brought a bunch here, and. Um, you can buy various sizes of brushes for the different 
sizes of stencils you're going to paint in. But what I like to do is I like to test my brush and see uh, my, <laughs> my brush is a little dusty. Um, I like to see if the hairs are coming out of the brush. You have to use a round stencil brush with a flat head for the best results. And um, hello from upstate. Hi, Susan. And um, yeah, so this brush will give you the best results. Uh, you don't want hair falling into your paint and you want the flat head. So when you're painting on the surface, it's really like doing a good job. Um, so good brushes. <laughs> um, I do like to use low tech spray adhesive. I put it on the back of my stencil and then I place my stencil on the shirt and you'll see that in a minute. Um, you should spray this on the stencil in a well-ventilated area. Uh, make sure you get the one that says repositionable because you don't want to just glue it. You know, some of, they sell glue like this too. We don't want to glue our stencil to um, our shirt. We just want to tack it down there and, and make our life a little easier. Um, I use paper plates. I also use like a big palette glass plate sometimes for my paint. And you'll see why that's helpful in a little while uh, where I go into the dry brush technique where you don't want a lot of paint on your brush when you're stenciling. So I did bring a few t-shirts as well to show you. Um, let's see, I could hold these up to the camera. Oh yeah, all right, we'll do this camera. So here's our larger size type stencil where you know, you can cover the entire front of a shirt. Uh, this is one of our anchors. And again, back to that choosing a good paint for the softness. Um, this is just a part of the shirt. It's been washed already and it's stayed and it's um, quite soft. Um, I brought this one because I could show you that with just three stencils that are small, um, you can cover an entire shirt. You can let kids go crazy with the stencils and just do their best filling in, um, you know, unicorns, lightning bolts, hearts, rainbows. Uh, a little tiny stencil can be repeated over and over. And we have other ones where you could do some more fashion statement, New York, Paris, London. Uh, you'll see this one on our site. And that's like a silver fabric paint. So you get a little bling. Uh, here I used, I technically sold these at first as wall stencils, but I thought it made a nice shirt, especially black and white with the chrysanthemums. So this could be on your wall, but it could be also on your clothing. <laughs> and then there's this one that I showed earlier where I'm going to be painting um, more designs right on here to show you. So without further ado, um, I'm going to use some of these stencils from this I Love You pack. So they all break apart easily. And to begin, I'm going to take a paper plate um, and I'm going to show you using some green paint. Mix or shake your paint up so it's all ready. Um, or you can get these little stir wood, wood sticks at the craft store and this will really get the thick part of the paint up to the surface so again i like these paints because they have a good thickness to them now before we get into the paint <laughs> i'm going to show you positioning your stencil Let's see here. Okay. All right. 
I'm going to put the word love down here and layer it over. Actually, I want it here. So it looks like it's telling a story of I love music. <laughs> um, so you take your spray adhesive and on the reverse side, on a like a cardboard, you lay this down. And you spray the back of it. But you let this dry a minute. So you could wave it around a little. And there's going to be some glue on the back of the stencil, which we want. But if there's too much, you can place it down on paper, lift it up, and get off that clumpy residue. Now, I want you to notice this shirt is in inside of it is a shipping box. So to stretch it nice and flat, so we have a flat surface to paint on, there's a FedEx shipping box inside of uh, inside the shirt. Dry brushing is hard for me to achieve any tips. Oh, yeah, I'm going to show you. Hello from London, Katie. Hi, Katie. I'm going to London in a month. I welcome you. So here I have love, right? Um, what I like to do is this design is so close to the edge and there's these thin little shapes of this stencil. So we've got the spray adhesive holding it down, but I also like to put a piece of tape not so much to even hold it, but to help me from coloring outside of the stencil. So if there's an area on the stencil close to the edge, I just put some tape to make a little border. I don't stick it down so hard, though, because I want to be able to peel this up soon enough. All right, dry brush technique. <laughs> um, I'm going to choose uh, this size brush, and I'll show you. OK, so dry brush technique. You're dipping into the paint. And I think where so many of us have learned when we're kids to paint is, OK, now I've got the paint on my brush, and I'm going to go paint. Well, stenciling, you take off a lot of the paint. <laughs> so there's very little paint on my brush now. And I'd rather have too little than too much with stenciling because I don't know if you can see this thin little plastic line between the LO and the VE, but I want to see that when I'm done in the details. So you've got very little paint on the brush. And then you can start in the biggest area. Like, so it's a little easier for you to paint. And then once the brush, oh, notice I'm tapping. I'm going up and down. But now my brush is running out of paint. So this is probably a great time for me to do this thin little line between the L and the V. I almost act like I'm hitting down that plastic. I don't want to swirl and push the stencil or make the brush go under the plastic. I want to beat down the stencil. <laughs> yeah. And you'll notice, like, I thought I was running out of paint on the brush, but the harder I press down, I can get a little more paint out of the brush. So now I need some more paint, but what I have to remember every time is when I dip in to the paint that I have to dry it off again. Um, yes. So now it's drier. I could go to a bigger area.
Okay. Hard to talk and do that. Um, <laughs> so Katie, you said about dry brush is hard. So I hope that helps a little of definitely taking paint off the brush first each time. Um, any temporary spray adhesive. I don't know the brand mentioned there, but the one I've used is this Scotch spray mount, but I think any, you know, I think different places make different brands. And as long as it's repositionable adhesive, um, that's, that's the one you want. Um, now with this, I can see areas that I could use a little filling in, or do I want it to look a little more, um, you know, vintage, but I'll fill it in for, uh, in this case, I'll fill it in. And we're done with that word, that love stencil. So I just take, carefully take the tape off. Some people ask, do I have to wait for the paint to dry? You don't. You carefully lift your stencil off and You'll see there, there's a little space between the L and the V, just like there is this very thin line on the stencil. So mission accomplished. Now we got our shirt saying like, I love music. Um, I'm going to show you another technique in a minute, but I did want to suggest that if you want to keep your stencils a long time, I have stencils for, excuse me, for over 10 years. I throw this in soapy water, and then in a little while after that, I um, gently, very gently rub it with uh, um, like a, a, a scratchy sponge. So uh, if you want to clean your stencils each time, uh, that's what I suggest. And to get the glue off the back, uh, orange oil uh, cleaner is very helpful too. So those are ways you can really keep your stencils a long time because our stencils are mylar, um, which is similar to plastic and lasts quite, quite long. Like I said, I have I actually have stencils like that are 15 years old. Um, I want to show you another technique, which will be, uh, we'll use this heart stencil. And I thought it would be fun to do an ombre effect where you're blending a few colors um so the heart would look kind of airbrushed going from we'll we'll use green again but we'll go from uh green to maybe this um turquoise uh so we'll we'll blend the heart to go two different colors and kind of look like an 80s airbrush look with um, with this stencil. Hello. So um, again, I'm going to spray the back with the spray adhesive. I'm going to tape down my edges, but then I'm going to show you um, for this, you need two brushes. I already started one with the green paint, um, but uh, this is our, our bonus um, how to of how to create a little ombre effect uh, using one stencil and two colors of paint. Okay, so go back to my spraying board here and um, I'm gonna spray the back of this. There, spraying better. <laughs> Earlier it was clogged, so. Um, once again, I'm gonna let this dry. How wet should the bristles be? Um, that's a great question. Um, when you're drying it on the plate, which I'll do again now, you'll see some paints clearly there on the brush, but you don't want any, the, the brush should almost look just stained with paint. 
I hope that helps, but I'll do it right now again on, uh, on the plate. Um, okay, so I'm gonna place the heart, um, I guess here, to do a little overlay of this pattern that was down earlier. And again, this design is so close to the edge, especially on that side, that I'm gonna just put some tape around it so I don't go outside of it. And I've sworn that I'm, oh, I'm not gonna go outside here. I've got like, you know, half inch, but I somehow go outside of the line still. So that that keeps me in there. So, all right, how wet is the brush? So here's a clump of paint on the plate, plate, right? And if I were to go right in with this, I'd have pretty bad results. So when I'm drying it off here, and once I see like no big clump of paint on my brush, I'm pretty good to go. Um, see if I press here on the plate, you'll still see it's giving me coverage, but it's not like bulky. So I think that's um, a great way to go. So with the two colors, you're going to start with just one color. Um, sorry, am I off, off a little? <laughs> Thinking in reverse here. All right, there we go. Nice. Um, I'm going to start coloring in just the top part of the heart. I'm tapping up and down again. But while I'm doing this, I'm thinking, what would look nice for this green to blend into another color? Um, so I'm purposely, I'm gonna paint it sort of like, it's three quarters of the heart is green. Now, here's where I do like a little trick where I start to paint a little more green in here, but I make it really dry. I'm pressing less. So you see it's a little like uh, a little bit there, but not really. Now I'm gonna save that brush. I'm gonna use another color. Uh, I'm sorry, it says, uh, will you put the shirt in the frame? Okay, I hope I'm in the frame now. Um, I want to ask, I wanna use Shriva paints. Will the orange, uh, I don't know what Shriva paints are. Again, I want to point out like the creamy, perfect thickness of this turquoise paint. Um, I love it. Now, I'm going to use a different brush, not the same brush, for this color. And on the bottom of the heart, I'm putting the turquoise. I'm starting heavy, so we see this turquoise color. I'm purposely not painting anywhere the green is yet. So now I'm going to start to 
move into the, uh, oh, you cannot use oil paints, no. Um, you can use oil paints with stencils, I guess, but um, you can't use oil paint on shirts and that's what we're doing today. But for stencils, you can use oil paints, but I never use oil paints. So um, that would be, I'm sure they clean off of uh, the, however one cleans brushes with oil paint, that cleaner will work on the stencils and it won't affect the stencil, but it'll take the paint off the stencil. So I hope that helps, but never ever use oil paint on a t-shirt. <laughs> this is fabric paint. So I'm slowly bringing this turquoise into the green. I know they're similar colors on camera, but they look different in real life here. Um, but now I'm starting to lightly cover some of the green with the turquoise. And that's where you're like live blending. And then I can take my green brush, which was already dry, and I can bring some of the green over the turquoise. going to see a little blend here. Um, I hope you see this enough on camera, but you always see it more once I pull up the stencil. So let's, let's see how we did. <laughs> um, and of course, while you're here, if you had this stencil, you could paint these two little hearts in as well if you wanted, like it's really up to you. But I was gonna just do this one ombre stencil for you. You could see that. I could also hold it to the bigger camera, but um, that is another way to do stenciling is to do ombre effects where you're using two colors. You can use five colors. I've made like rainbow hearts um, where you're just taking that same technique, but using five brushes, five colors. Um, and uh, yeah, so now I kind of love how this shirt is, uh, saying, I love music. Um, <laughs> these kind of look like sound waves. These, uh, this is also, I made as a wall stencil. Uh, again, you see orange to red, like another ombre effect used there. So um, that's the tutorial for today. Um, I'm gonna look at these questions. Uh, what paints are you using again? Yeah, I'm using Pebio set color fabric paints. Um, so there are the, Best quality, I think. I've used other ones, um, and I recommend these for um, fabric because of their thickness and their softness once once you use them. Um, yeah, don't use shriveled paints on, on clothing. Don't use oil paints on clothing. Um, so with this, you now want to dry it with a hairdryer at first, and then you want to iron it to heat seal in the design. And the way you do that is you put a piece of fabric um, over the design once it's dry on the ironing board and then iron. You don't put the iron directly on what you painted. You put the iron on the fabric that is between the iron and the design. Um, then you could wash your shirt and you'll see that it might fade very, very little. Um, like I showed you all those shirts I already made, they, um, they've all been washed and they look great. So that's how you keep your shirt, um, you know, the design lasting. And again, to wash these, you just throw them in soapy water like now while it's a little wet still, um, that'll be best. And then once it's soaked a little, you can, uh, rub it with a sponge and water, a soapy sponge and water. Um, 
So I'm Ed from Stencil One. If you're just tuning in, um, oh, there's questions. Uh, so I'm using Pebio fabric paints. Will the paint bleed on white shirts? No, um, I, don't, I don't have a white shirt done really crisp like this, but um, these paints don't bleed. Uh, once you've painted it where it is, regardless of what color you're painting on, um, they will stay where you've painted them. And you can paint on black shirts or white shirts um, or anything in between, it will show. Um, do you need to seal it? You just seal it with heat, with the iron, and then that's what will keep it there. No like chemical or anything. Um, I use, what brushes do I use? I use, um, I actually got these on Amazon, so they were like some generic brand, but I do sell art alternatives brushes on my website. Um, but any flathead natural bristle brush, um, I think is best. Um, yeah, the brushes. So these are boar bristle, which are not vegan, but they hold paint unlike a nylon brush where the paint just slips off of the brush. Um, parchment paper for the stencil. I think parchment paper might be too thin and shift around a lot um, unless it's thick. With, with the free stencil that we sent um, that you can cut out, um, you can get a sheet of um, like cardboard. I've done them out of like uh, an old folder. Um, and what else would work well? Um, at the craft store, you can get a piece of what they call oil board, or of course you can get a sheet of acetate and mylar. Um, we do sell blanks on our site too. Uh, cardstock will work, but you're only gonna get a few uses out of the cardstock. Um, it's interesting because in the books, they use paper stencils, but it's a very like waxed paper. Um, you can't see it, but it's, it's coated. So it has to be thick enough to resist the paint. Um, so are you using 100? I do use 100% cotton t-shirts, but uh, you don't have to. And this one happens to be 50-50, uh, and it works fine. The paint will stick to 50-50 uh, shirts. Uh, cardstock, I don't, I think cardstock will work. You just won't get um, too many uses of that stencil, but you'll get a few uses of it. Um, then the paper will start to suck up the paint and, and then, uh, you have to cut another one, <laughs> but they do sell sheets of acetate at like, um, office stores. And I have cut stencils out of that a lot. And, um, you know, that that'll work. So it's like a clear sheet of plastic. Do you iron the red orange design before you added the layer you did today? In this case, I happen to have, yes, but if I had painted that red and orange design on first, um, like meaning just earlier, all I would have to do is wait for this to dry or dry it with a hair dryer before I started layering other things onto it. So um, if I had done this all today, I wouldn't have had to iron until the very end. Yeah, I hope that helps. So you don't have to iron each design to layer, et cetera. You can just make sure they're dry before you're layering onto them. Cleaning the brushes, I know. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm, as I'm talking here, I'm like, man, I wish I was soaking these already um, to keep them. I like to soak them uh, in, actually I fill a little cup with soap and I just put pure soap, um, like Dawn soap, all over them. And then I add really hot water in a little while and then I hand clean them. Um, you'll see like some of my old brushes are stained, but I could use them again. They just happen to have gotten stained because the or bristle is uh, very absorbent. So yeah, my old brushes are like stained purple and blue and stuff. Um, 
so that's how I clean my brushes. Uh, sure. The, the brand of this paint is Pebeo. Um, P-E-B-E-O, and it's called Seta Color is the fabric paint. Um, they come in transparent and opaque, which I didn't uh, mention earlier. So transparent, you'll see it's thinner and you'll see the texture of your shirt. Um, the opaque, you won't see through the paint. Uh, I like opaque. I want to just see the coverage. Um, unless you really want a vintage look to your shirt, um, you could use the transparent, but it's Pebio, um, Pebio fabric paint. Stencil one stencils, Pebio fabric paint, scotch spray mount, repositionable adhesive. Um, and some of these brushes are art alternatives. Can you use parchment paper over the paint before you iron so you don't get your iron dirty? Um, I haven't used parchment paint, but I have used a thin piece of fabric. I've used a um, dish towel. That's what I, or tote bag. I tend to put a thin piece of fabric between my iron and the shirt. It's a good question. Haven't tried parchment paper, but I bet you could. <laughs> Let me know how that works. How can I use it on a sleeve? Um, when I do sleeves, I cut a piece of cardboard that fits just like here and then place my stencil on that piece of cardboard. Um, so in my studio, I have all various sizes of cardboard. So, you know, we've got the box inside the shirt right now, but for the sleeve, you can get a piece of, cut a piece of cardboard that will just stretch that sleeve, you know, nicely to uh, give you that surface to paint on. Thank you for reading. Oh, hello, Canada. Yeah, Pebio, you'll find Pebio. Um, they have a lot of uh, stores and offices in Canada, so I bet you'll find this fabric paint easily. Um, I've used fabric markers. Um, Sharpie makes stained. Um, Pebio makes fabric markers. Um, I don't know the difference between all of them, really. Um, I'm just more of a painter, so I have not uh, done too many projects with um, markers. But I have done some vans, like some canvas shoes with um, markers. Um, they're very convenient, easy to paint in with. So um, they certainly work with our stencils. Um, so I, I do recommend that they're easy and fun and a, a little less challenging than paint. Um, uh, I've ordered these paint. Somebody asked if I've ordered this paint on Amazon. Um, I've ordered this brand of paint on Amazon, which again is Pebeo, P-E-B-E-O. Um, I don't know what other specific fabric paints are on Pebeo. Um, there are a few very big brand. I'm not going to slam a brand on here, but there are very popular fabric paint brands that I don't care for because the paint is thin. And that's great if you're painting a shirt, but not if you're stenciling a shirt because you don't want thin paint. So this paint is uh, thicker. Pebio brand. That's it. OK. Thank you, everyone. That's the finale of the show. Um, again, I'm Ed from Stencil One. Uh, our website stencil1.com. I have 500 different stencils on there for your walls, for your t-shirts. I even have makeup stencils. Um, so those are really new and funny and interesting. Um, and I greatly appreciate it. Thank you, Craftsy. And uh, thank you, everyone, for watching um, from 
gosh, UK, upstate, China, all these places. It's very nice to connect. And I hope to see you in the next one when we do some other type of project.